Hello research techs and neuroscientists. This is Cam working for Dr. Ronald Cease in the Cease Lab. Ronnie, as you may know him by now. Uh, and this is for anybody who, well, hopefully you would have read through the actual protocol, but this is to help you out by showing you things uh, without pictures so you can see it hands on, so to speak. <clears throat> so you're learning about cutting. Today I won't be showing you the setup in terms of any of the plates or anything, but I might get that into another video. Uh, however, for right now, we're just going to go over the parts of the cryostat and working with it. So this is, again, is Cryostar NX50, which you would have read on the protocol, but, you know, if not, that's fine. <laughs> so, to get started, we'll start with the control panel, which should be on. Uh, it'll turn back off on its own, so we don't worry about that. But again, so this is for taking fine sections. This is for chopping off the face. So whenever I say the face, whenever you have a block here on the specimen head, and it's mounted up on there, uh, this is to help essentially chip away in, uh, in a manner that isn't like fine or refined because you're just chopping off pieces of block until you get to the shadow of the tissue. Um, so you, again, whenever you're actually cutting tissue, you want it always set to this, which is the fine sections. And again, 50 microns. Uh, this is at 13 degrees uh, Celsius. That's because nobody's currently using it or anything. You'll want it to be negative 20 degrees Celsius or below. Uh, not too much below though, because that can damage tissue. To go over the parts, it doesn't look like anybody's working on this right now and there's no marks. So when I say marks, you can see there's a bit of a Sharpie still left over. So sometimes whenever you don't finish in one day, you leave a mark so that you can make sure you place the block in the same spot. So there's the bit where the Sharpie's left over. But however, this looks like it's all the way back already. I'll double check. Yeah, it seems so. But in any case, this, which is the uh, knife stage, just in case I won't move anything else in case anybody's working on here but it doesn't seem like it again yeah neither of those are being used um this is the nice stage and as you just heard this can move in or out and again that is adjusted by this this is to move quickly in slowly in quickly out you would start quickly in and then as you get closer to the block you'd move a little bit slower and so on doesn't need much more explanation than that um can move this this in terms of what you'll be using i mean there's a bunch of pieces we can go over so this would be a adjust so you can move it left to right but you won't be needing to do that just keep it centered um in terms of the nice stage you don't need to move left or right this is to unclamp and put a blade into the slot so this is the clamping for the uh, blade this is for clamping down you can see it there a chuck and this is a chuck, which is the piece that you'll be setting the block on. So for what you'll be talking about, or what I'll be talking about in the protocol and you'll be reading about, I set this down here, you'll be placing OCT onto here and covering like this inner area. And you'll be taking a block and sort of pushing it down into there. And then you'll be sitting onto the cryo bar like this. And it's a circle, so it'll fit right into that area. And you'll go up here and you turn, oh, sorry, turn on the cryo bar. And then turn it off after a few minutes and it should be frozen and i have pictures of that on the protocol uh to here and if it's not like uh it doesn't seem like it's well secured you can go around once the block is frozen to it and kind of put some extra around the edges and that's again a picture on the protocol this little storage area you well, you can this is where you can place uh the chucks when you're not using them like i mentioned the protocol but otherwise, you can, once it's on the chuck, the chuck will fit right into here in the specimen head. You can clamp it down like that and it'll stay in place. You wanna make sure this is nice and secure. Uh, this is for actually moving the specimen head. This should always be tight, although you can double check it because if this gets loosened up, then uh, essentially it would uh, mess up the angle that you're cutting at and then you take a chunk out of the block that you don't need to. Um, so that should always be tight and just don't mess with it otherwise. No unclamp that and put it back because I'm not using it so here I describe it as the this is where you slot your blade in and I'll show you that so here again the microtome blades so all this is the microtome setup this is a microtome within a cryostat the cryostat is essentially just a big freezer and you shove a microtome in it which is for sectioning pieces of tissue 
Okay, so nice and careful, slide it out. This is not, I don't advise doing this with one hand like I am, but you know, for, it's for the, for the shot. Okay, be very careful when doing this because these blades are very sharp. I'm going very slowly. Okay, so how you would do this is, I already unclamped it before. It slots into here. This is really tricky, but be very careful. Slots in here like so. Okay. I kind of push it from the side a bit if it's not centered, and then you'll be able to clamp it down. Nice and tight, you pull on it, and it shouldn't move. So, uh, in this case, rather than being an idiot and trying to touch with my fingers like that, these would usually all be on the toolbar, but I guess somebody wanted to set them there. You don't have to test it like this, but I'm just going to show you that if even if I want to look over the camera here for a second, Oh, nope, see, it's not secure because it's moving around. So I'm pushing down on the clamp here. And now, nope, not moving. It's good to go. So I push down on the clamp like so, this way. I was pushing in the wrong direction. It's a bit confusing when you're holding the camera too. But pushing down on the clamp, and that'll keep it secure so that this doesn't move. You want that secure again you want this clamp down so that the actual specimen doesn't move and you also want to keep the specimen make sure the specimen head is secure too but i mean if it feels like it's not moving on its own then don't even mess with it uh, but these are just the things you want to check in terms of if you're troubleshooting uh making sure before you you know assume that something's wrong with the actual block which can be a thing if you didn't freeze it properly okay now uh the way that i usually do this if you don't want to cut your hand is you can just go from the side and push it out like that carefully grab it from the sides not from the blade again like you'd be surprised if you're being gentle it doesn't seem like it'll cut you good first but if you're not careful this will just easily slice it open and again put it in the sharp spin there we go uh, and when you're not using it like I mentioned before I have it set up here have the good old blade cover set it on there so nobody gets hurt boom okay so that's for that um, in terms of actually cutting, again, you'd want to move it up to the block to just before the block. Like, there'd be like a fine hair of space, but if you do it too much, you'll start, you'll take a chunk out, and you can potentially, if this stage hits it at the wrong angle, could knock it off the chalk and just goes flying. It'll, it's wild if you see it, but I hope you don't. So, in terms of actually cutting it, once you get it up to the actual face of the block, and again, I don't have a block out right now to give you an example, uh, then you can start taking sections. So whenever you're just facing off, you can uh, switch it. And again, facing off is taking off all the excess OCT before you actually reach tissue in the block. So a bunch of white stuff and frozen. Uh, you can switch it um, to taking non-fine sections because at that point you're just chopping things to get out of the way. But again, when you start to see even slight shadow of a tissue, when I say shadow of a tissue, you'll start to see a black dot almost like or like a discoloration in the ice uh, and the dry ice and uh, of the OCT. I mean, it's not necessarily ice, but I'm just saying this for that's what it looks like. But in the frozen OCT, you'll be able to see uh, the shadow, uh, it's kind of like a coloration of it coming through. And it gets more obvious the more you do it, but uh, just be very careful. As soon as you see that, you wanna start switching to the fine and taking sections like that. Okay, but getting to the point, this is your hand wheel. And the hand wheel, in this case, sometimes it'll actually move the blade, but in this case, it moves the specimen head. Same effect, because it's going down and it moves it slightly forward each time. Um, well, in terms of like the actual sections, uh, or not sections, and so the actual stage going forward. And how it works is that as it goes down, that's one cut. So about halfway is cutting, cutting off the face, and then the other half is coming back up. And how you want to do this is you want to do it almost as like a, uh, there's like a rhythm to it. So you want to cut, easy back up, cut, easy back up, cut, easy back up, cut up cut up cut up cut up and don't just be the one like that <laughs> easy sections at a time cut up and that's kind of the rhythm you want to do with it so anytime you're stopping like say you're taking a piece of tissue out always put the safety clamp on 
In this case, there's an arrow to indicate it. It might be a bit different on your cryostat, I'm not sure, but there will be always a safety clamp. Always have that on whenever you're breaching your hand in. Uh, ideally, you can't always put, like, you know, most times you'll be busy, so you don't have to put this on every time. But if you're walking away from the cryostat, definitely have the blade on, uh, the blade cover on. However, uh, if you're reaching in, just bear in mind to be very careful about this because you can, again, slice your hand open. In this case, this will move out of the way, and you can see in there is a waist spin that can slide out. So anytime that fills up with a bunch of excess OT OCT shavings from when you're chopping it off, you can just pull that out, toss it into the bin, unless there's tissue in it. In that case, uh, usually it'll, it'll produce like a roll of tissue. Uh, I mean, ideally, in an ideal situation, we're not rolling it, but that's just the technique we have right now. Maybe it'll be different for you. Um, but you know, regardless, you take the section off and it'll probably fall in either onto the stage or into the waste bin. You'll use the tweezers to very carefully just grab it you don't want to squeeze the tissue and damage it just grab it pick it up and you'll probably have um that one to eight concentration of pbs uh to distilled uh h2o here put it in there as your uh, mounting medium and let it dissolve until you get to the tissue let it dissolve away with the oct so that's like the process of going back and forth Again, specimen head where you put the chuck and the chuck is what holds the OCT block once you freeze it to there with more OCT which in this case we have up here you would just take the cap off squeeze it on there in a relatively continuous motion because you don't want to if you don't if you do it off and on it'll create bubbles and you don't want that um, and you'll freeze it to there attach it on here lock it in you know get everything take off the hood Put in the blade, clamp it down, make sure it's secure. Double check that the specimen head secure. Um, I'm not gonna touch this, but usually your tools would be over here on uh, the tool shelf here. And so I'm trying to think of anything else I would have missed, but that's the basics for actually using the cryostat. Again, moving it, you have your control panel. There are other features on here, like this is a measurements, but you can have it set to where C equals 95. That's actually the number of sections if you hold this in. Oh, actually, I'm gonna keep it there just in case somebody's working on this. But if you were to hold it in, it would be set to zero and it'll count the number of sections you're taking as you do it. But that's just for this particular model. Again, it might be different for yours on that respect, but the basics should be the same. Yeah, uh, and again, anytime you're not using it or you step away, also be sure to close the window. And whenever you're freezing the block, you wanna make sure you close the window because if you have it open for too long, especially when you walk away, it can warm up and your OCT block will start melting and that'll just mess everything up. And that is not what we want. So again, the window closed whenever you're not using it. Um, otherwise, it can get pretty cold in here. Just be careful with your hands. Uh, to go over it again, if you do cut your hand with a blade, immediately put pressure on it so you're not bleeding everywhere. And even if you do get a few drops here and there, just inform your lab manager so you can sort it out and clean it off. Ideally, you can clean it off with 100% alcohol to come off. But it can, if it freezes to the OCT block, you might just have to chip away some of the block that has the blood on it. But, you know, I'm just telling you the haphazard solutions in terms of hopefully you won't encounter that. You're, you're going to be safe and not have that happen. But usually people have it happen at least once before they learn the lesson. I've had it happen once, but fortunately I was able to get my hand out in time, so <laughs> it wasn't bleeding everywhere. So that being said, uh, that's the basics of actually handling the cryostat.